freshman from Centerville, Ohio. A big matchup. Taylor Theory going to jump up against Monica Sinano. Sinano and Caitlin Clark with that big one-two punch from the perimeter and in the post. And we are underway in the Big Ten Championship. Automatic bid on the line. Both these teams will be in the NCAA tournament. As the, the Swiss Army knife, if you will. McKenna Warnock did not play in the first game against Ohio State, as you mentioned. But how was Gabby Marshall yesterday? Well, and Gabby Marshall has been so impressive. Struggled early in the season, but has caught fire as of late. She at 58% from the three in the last nine. Tied a career high with seven threes yesterday. Off the turnover. Monica Sinano able to come up with the rebound for the Hawks, who lead the nation in scoring and field goal percentage and assists, those but their offense a little slow to get started. Well, those long passes are not going to be there against Ohio State. They are too good at getting in the passing lanes. Really relying on their defense, and they go off to a 19-0 start. Best start, and who beat them? The Hawks got That's them. It. Hawks. Hawks broke that streak. Yep, they were 19-0 until they played Iowa. And then Iowa beat them in Columbus. Again, that was back in January, in which Caitlin Clark had a triple-double. Ricky Harris takes a little bit of contact. Rebound taken down by Sinano. Clark and Sinano combined for 50 in that ball game. So Iowa had turned the ball over in its first three possessions. Gabby Marshall is white hot right now. She sure is. And Lisa Bluter talking about Gabby Marshall all throughout the year, and hey, we needed to get her going, and boy, has she ever gotten going. Speaking of getting going, Taylor Mike Sell. It could be a fun battle between Mike Sell and Marshall. Mike Sell averaging over three threes per game. That is first in the Big Ten. It rims out for Caitlin Clark. Clark had 22 against Maryland yesterday, but was rather quiet in the second half. Most of her points coming from the line. And that's when the rest of her teammates really galvanized and won that game. Yeah, it really was. And this is an Iowa Hawkeye team that every defense is going to focus on Clark and Sinano. So when multiple players can knock down shots from the perimeter, as they're capable of doing, they are so tough to stop. Well, Mike, so that's a long two for her. Ohio State, her third school. Almost another turnover, Mike Sell. Ball security, valuing the basketball, handling the press. Well, the press isn't getting him. It's in the quarter court. Making sure you give yourself a chance to get a shot off, and there's another turnover. All Big Ten this year, the redshirt junior from Indianapolis. And what a job she's done, stepping up in the starting point guard role when J.C. Sheldon went out for injury. And then Walker back rims it. Sonano comes up with another rebound, and here's Caitlin Clark. All eyes on her whenever she has the basketball. You see Ohio State fronting Monica Sinano inside. Trying to not allow her to get a touch. And Walker drawing that matchup. Clark to Warnock, who turned around and found herself unguarded. Instead of taking a jump shot, she decided to drive. Warnock did miss the game when they played during the regular season. Harris, nothing doing. Chased down by Warnock. Both teams had double buys, so they didn't play until Friday, but still their third game in as many days. Clark backs up and hits nothing but net. Third game in as many days, and Ohio State had to expend a lot of energy in their second half comeback against Indiana. They played 94 feet that entire second half, so how much will they have in the tank? fans outnumbering Ohio State large by large margin and Taylor Theory with the shot and Pam that used to be the game plan right to make Taylor Theory shoot the basketball because she was not a very good three-point shooter only one of five a year ago but she's now shooting at 38 percent you have to respect it as Kaylin Clark goes to work this time Clark shows she can take you off the bounce and Theory hitting that shot the first person other than Mike Sell to hit a shot for the Buckeyes. Walker, good look, but it rimmed out. Ohio State getting all jump shots, all perimeter contested jump shots. Clark looking for Sonano. And sometimes she makes a pass and you're thinking, there's no way that's going to connect, and it almost always seems to. She just has such great instincts. 
Her timing is perfect. She understands how to get the ball to her teammates. She knows where she's going to go with it every possession. She and Sonano have just an incredible bond on the court. Sonano has great hands. Bart bit on the fake from Theory. And a jump ball as Warnock got her hands. And Caitlin Clark just had another, uh, another line to her resume. Five hundred career points now for Caitlin Clark. She's second in career scoring in Iowa already. I mean that's incredible. She's in her third and she's year. She's in her third year. Megan Gustafson. Yes, Megan Gustafson. He was one of the great scorers in Iowa women's oh, basketball yeah. history. Caitlin Clark scores or assist on 53 percent of Iowa's offensive production, second in the country, only to McKenna Hofschild out of Colorado State. I mean, that's just a phenomenal percentage of production that she brings to the table for the Hawkeyes. They're absolutely a totally different team, and she's on the floor. Sonano with her second basket. Iowa's on an 8 nothing run. Well, we talk so much about her ability to score because she is an outstanding scorer, almost 27 a game. But she is a great passer. I mean, she, there are a lot of, of, of really good scores that we've seen in the, throughout the country in women's basketball, but not very many who do both at an elite level. And she is one of them. Caitlin Clark is averaging over eight assists per game. To go along with 27 points, seven and a half rebounds. And she does also a great job of getting to the free throw line. Taylor Fury with her first personal foul. You find ways to get to the foul line, and now she's getting in once. And she's an excellent free throw shooter as well. Can rebound the ball. She's got good speed, too. Gets down there quickly, a falter in the game. Clark tried to get it into Sonano. It was kicked. Iowa State had been starting, now coming off the bench for Coach McGuff, get some size. But she is an emotional player. Her team up 20 to 7. It is a 14-0 run. Harris, nope, good rebound by Theory. Second chance, nothing doing. Buckeyes are getting a lot of opportunities around the rim that they're not able to convert on. Also did not take advantage of those four early turnovers by, by Iowa, didn't score on any of them. And now J.C. Sheldon, number four, into the game. Can score the basketball, but she sets the tone on D. You'll see them full court press most of the time when she's out there. She changes the pace of the game. And right there, a steal. And look, you can't press if you don't score the basketball. So dead ball, perfect opportunity for the Buckeyes. Give it right back. Clark looking, had that, had that look in her eye, like she was going to put up another shot. That's a great pass by a falter into Sonano. Well, that's going to be the matchup to take advantage of. And Mikola Shakova is guarding Monica Sonano. She's not going to work to get in front. She's going to try to play behind and use her length and size. Iowa State desperate for points and to travel. Sonano has taken her game to another level, led the nation in field goal percentage for a couple of years. Molly Davis, number one in for Iowa. Transfer from Central Michigan. Theory finally stops what had been a 16-0 run for Iowa. And now in front of Sonano. Gabby Marshall gets bottled up, got rid of it before she took steps. Also took some contact from. As we go inside a minute in the first quarter, Iowa is hitting a ridiculous 82% from the floor. And we're not talking about layups now. Three of four from three for Iowa. Oh, 
Harris decides to drive on Clark, who has become a better defensive player this year. Shot clock is dying. And nope, shot clock off now for the Hawks. Taylor Theory, I'm forcing Caitlin Clark back into the help right here. Oh, fantastic. Down Stokey to close out. They, they talk about that. Make it hard on her, but. She, obviously, that's the game plan, and hardly anybody's ever done that. Well, look, and the way that you make it hard on her, and she's seen it all year long, is physicality. It's closing up the gap. You cannot give her any space because she's going to make you pay. And Pam, look, all season long, it's like, who do we compare her to, right? Because we've never seen a women's basketball player like Caitlin Clark. And, you know, it's Steph Curry on the theory. He is seven of Ohio State's 11 points. Ohio State held to single digits in the first quarter for only a third time this year. As they trail 26 to 9. Stokey again. Count it. Oh. Yeah, Mike sold Mr. or let her go just for a second. Excel now has two personal fouls. She's their leading scorer. Kevin McGuff is keeping her out there. There she is, number 24, guarded by the other 24, Gabby Marshall. Defense! 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 Kevin McGuff said, hey, we have to get stops. And I know Iowa is shooting the leather off the basketball right now, but they have to get the stops to play at the pace they want. He said, we need fast break points. And defensively, we have to get help side if we're going to lob, and we also have to get ball pressure on the passer so that lob doesn't come in easily in the paint. My fans appreciating Stokey and a falter for their efforts. Clark, again, just needs maybe a foot. It feels like it, it sounds like it. About 290 miles north of Carver Hawkeye here at Target Center. It's about a four and a half hour drive and so many people have made the drive. And so far they're loving what they're seeing in this Big Ten Championship. As you can hear after Monica Sedano knocked that shot in, all the Iowa fans are packed thick in here. Matter of fact, Lisa Bluter, the head coach for Iowa, she said, it's like Carver North in this building in Minneapolis, and it most certainly has been like that for the Iowa Hawkeye team. And she said, you just respect them for committing themselves to supporting our team. It's great fans all season, Steph, right? Over 8,000 season tickets sold down there. I mean, it's a fun team to watch. You know, certainly there's a limited opportunity to watch like, potentially one of the best players to ever play the game as Monica Sinano gets another two. You know, Caitlin Clark's not going to don a Hawkeye jersey forever, so you want to take advantage of the opportunity to, to, to watch her. And this is a community in Iowa City that has supported its women's basketball programs since C. Vivian Stringer was there. They love their basketball. Cody McMahon had a smart, good, offensive executing team. Recognize the mismatch, deliver it in a timely manner. And that was one of the things that Lisa Bluter wanted to perfect today was getting that lob in. Conversely, Kevin McGuff talked about stopping it, and Iowa has been executing it, but it helps when Caitlin Clark is doing the passing and the shooting. Sonano with the rebound, a falter back in the game. Dribbles out of trouble and then got fouled by Theory. Yeah, not sent now down to 79. <laughs> Another terrific pass. Clark to Sonano. And that wasn't an easy one to handle. Monica Sonano, great hands to be able to corral that ball and put it in. And most of the Hawkeye fans, which is by far most of the people in this building are on their feet now. Harris can't quiet them down. Ohio State just chucking long range shot after long range shot. 
12 points and five rebounds. The last time these two teams met, Clark and Sonano combined for 50. And then San Francisco Gonzaga follows that victory over Tennessee, who had an improbable comeback of their own against LSU yesterday. So many comebacks so far in these conference tournaments. Ohio State probably not going to happen on the first side of up the floor, got to get it moving back and forth. Cody McMahon, so good going downhill. Hadn't gotten a lot of touches where she comes off of those handoffs and is able to turn the corner. If you're Lisa Boris of the season, they're down by double digits and find ways to turn it around. But this is an experienced Iowa Hawkeye team, same starting group for the last three years. They understand these moments. And the travel on Davis, and you only have to, and a team that, is number two in the country behind South Carolina. Carly Green has him as his second overall seed. Six field goals in this game. O'Grady, who just came in, finishes. We saw Iowa this morning in shooting around, really working on that press break, getting the ball to the middle of the floor, and then continuing to try to score in transition. They want to make the Buckeyes pay, and so far they've done that. Clark and Warnock are the only starters in for Iowa. There's a little friendly fire right there as Warnock ran into a falter. Going to break the press. Clark, two on one, gives it to a falter. Falter gets them both. Clark doing damage against Ohio State. I mean, that's, look at those numbers. That's just incredible. Needs to be able to set their press and score in transition. In the half court right now, they're struggling shooting the basketball throughout a shot clock, not giving opportunities to break them down and get high percentage looks. Sheldon delivered on the line after being fouled by O'Grady. Side down to Sonano. Walter gets it to Clark. And room. Caitlin Clark in that regular. She's only got one today, but a lot of that is because I was not missing. Sheldon. High degree of difficulty. Couldn't get that one to go. Clark streaks down the floor and draws another foul. ESPA begins at 7.30 Eastern. Every minute of the regular season game is And that's what Cody McMahon can do. And I think Cody McMahon's got to get some more touches. The year for Ohio State since Kelsey Mitchell in 2015. Second team, all Big Ten performer this year, such a bright future. And now remember, Caitlin Clark's not on the floor. Molly so Davis Theory, the such a valuable player on the all defensive team, sits down with three fouls. Molly Davis, years at Central Michigan. Caitlin Clark, by the way, already has 21 points. 29th game this year with the least 20. Mike Sell. First points in a long time. Out of three early in this game. Out of that bucket, Ohio State finally is outscoring Clark. Who's going to come back in at the next whistle? against Maryland already COVID year, her extra year of eligibility, wanted another opportunity to play with Clark. Unfinished business for this team that was bounced early in the NCAA tournament. Lost in the second round to Creighton on their home floor. And he was a, remember Simano got a good look mm -hmm. at the very end and probably 90 times out of 100 she would hit that shot that didn't go in and the Hawks were upset. So Simano back again. Sell. Player that can light it up when she gets going. Most threes in the Big Ten this year. Clark 
directing Sonano and then told her to go after the screen. And that's a smart play. She saw how tight Sonano's defender was playing her, told her to slip out of it, and it was able to deliver it. Sonano and Clark have combined for 36 points now. Another board for Sonano, who is working on a double-double. Point lean of the championship game. Clark cleans up her own miss. We still have two minutes to go in this half, and Ohio State's already given up the most points they have in any half of the season. Two on one. Marshall decides to put it up herself. Clark gets the rebound. And then another assist. That's just what makes it so tough, Pam. Wow. You gotta play her ability to score, but she's such a heady player, an unselfish player that finds her open teammates and she just can pick you apart. Caitlin's got eight assists to go with the 23 points. A minute to go in the first half. I'm looking forward to hearing from Charlie Green the halftime. <laughs> yeah, me too. Does this move the needle for the Hawkeyes if they can sustain this or even expand on it? It's moved it for me. The margin of victory is certainly a key component, and there's Caitlin Clark finding Kate Martin in transition. It's almost like they're playing against air right now. Well, they're on a mission. Certainly disappointed they didn't compete for a regular season title in the Big Ten, an opportunity to get the tournament championship back-to-back -back years. Walker, nope. Martin corrals it, and now Clark. Her teammates can close out a remarkable first half. They need a shot. Clark couldn't get it off in time. Iowa going for its second straight Big Ten championship, and she said it at the end of shoot around this morning. Don't be afraid of the space between your dream and reality, and the space between dream and reality right now is maybe a couple of millimeters with this <laughs> huge lead. Now Ohio State did come back yesterday against top seed Indiana down 24, making shots and putting the press on. But they didn't make a lot of shots in the first half. And Iowa play they came out with getting Cody McMahon. So they've got to be a little smarter on the defensive end. State taking out top seed Indiana yesterday. Chance for a three-point play for Cody McMahon. Cody McMahon, freshman of the year in the Big Ten, has such a wonderful future ahead of her. And now they can set up the press. Kate Martin easily catches the pass from Clark. And I like that adjustment by Iowa, having Caitlin Clark take the ball out of bounds. She uses the baseline, makes good decisions. We see Sheldon getting the start here in the second half after coming off the bench to begin the game. Good pass inside. Here he does get the three-point play. Ohio State down 24 to Indiana yesterday. Largest comeback in the history of the Big Ten tournament as they were able to come back and win that game. So the only team in D1 to do that from 20 down. But this is a much larger deficit. Good double on Sonano, who had her way inside in the first half. Jumbo. And get downhill. You saw Cody McMahon go right to work inside. They've scored all of their points so far in the second half in the paint. Shifting what we saw in the first half. 
able somehow to regather and score right before the shot clock went off. That's McKenna's first points of the game. Averages in double figures. State throws it away. Warnock does have another year of eligibility left, but she's not coming back. She's going to go to dental go to school. Dental school, yes. Kate Martin and Gabby Marshall are both set that are going to come back for that fifth year. This match inside. See if they can take advantage of it. So, no. yeah, you saw that yeah. all the way, right? Three for the Bucks. Warnock. Will Short. McMahon. Harris. Warnock messed that up. But Kate might throw it in from there. to playing in the two-man game as a post defender. So how does Ohio State, how would they handle that if you put Clark and Sonano in the two-man? And that was one of the concerns for Kevin McGuff was the post defense. Mike Sell can heat it up. Gets down, gets that three down. And by the way, that last foul was not on Caitlin Clark, but was on Sonano. She sits down with two fouls. And Anna Stokey, who had four points in the first half, comes in for her. Kept her dribble alive. Sheldon, over 2,000 career points, top 10 in threes at Ohio State, even though she's only been there a couple of years. Clark with the one-handed scoop throws off the rim. Harris. Warnock has been terrific on the boards. Plus 12 and rebounding in this game, and Caitlin Clark knocks down yet another three. You cannot be sitting inside the three-point line when Caitlin Clark is bringing the ball down the floor. Every highlight you see across the country is the logo three. You got to get up there and put some pressure on her. Stokey, no call after she got bumped by McMahon. And the logo here at the Big Ten Championship at the Target Center is not that big. So if you're hitting near the logo here, that's a really long shot. Well, Kevin McGuff talked to us about it before the game. He said, we can't be sitting inside the three-point line waiting on Caitlin Clark to come to us. She's not going to. I'm going to put it through the bottom of the net. The range is just unbelievable. It's like maybe they need a four-point line for her. That one off the mark. She's looking at each other, and it stays with Iowa. If we have this crazy shot going up, and Clark was like, I don't know who would do that. But I think there's a lot of trust between Clark and Bluter in terms of the choices that she makes. You know, Lisa Bluter doesn't like a lot of the, the quick e shots, but you can certainly tell when Caitlin Clark has a heat check kind of moment. Warnock picked up her second foul on the last trip, and Coach Bluter has also told us that she can tell that when there are times when she knows that Caitlin has that look in her eye, and she knows that she's going to go ahead and shoot it. And there are some of those that you just have to live with with your Lisa Bluter. But you can also talk to Caitlin Clark about certain timing of those situations as Sydney Falter continues to give this team a lift. Caitlin Clark's percentages are really good. 47% overall, 38% from three. The way that she finds her teammates, I mean, she's just a lot of fun to watch. Caitlin sits down. And then you look at her numbers and nearly 27 points, over eight assists, over seven rebounds, you know, shooting at those high percentages that you talked about. I mean, she is certainly, to me, the front runner for play National Player of the Year. I think she is. And, you know, there's other great players out there, the reigning Player of the Year, and Aaliyah Boston. But I don't think there's any doubt that Caitlin's the most valuable player in the country. All that she does for this team and the versatility that she brings. The consistency, the efficiency. Stolke, great hustle to keep it alive. A falter. Couldn't do much with it. So right now, just two starters on the floor for Coach Polluter. Iowa up 70.
supporting the Hawks. And I'm impressed with what he's been seeing. Clark back in the game. All on the timeout, got a couple of minutes rest. Mike Sell, see they can do this though, they can shoot their way back into a game. They had been down by as many as 37. Now it's 28. Came back from 24 yesterday against Indiana. Another turnover. Clark stuck her hand in. And to rush over to the arena because I wanted to see my Hawkeyes play and I asked him what is it like to have it feel like Carver North here and he said it's amazing. To see a player over the course of time has been amazing. He said he was in between Megan scored Zag on ESPN2, both available on the ESPN app. Mike Sell, just a little bit too strong. There's a rebound for Clark. Refers to the second half. Molly Davis with a great catch on the Clark pass. And now Clark officially has a double-double, her 10th assist, to go along with 26 points. Theory, patiently, wait, uh, Davis listed at 5'7". Her second three. Yeah, what an outstanding job he's done all season long. He talked to us about Liz Kitley coming on campus and changing the culture of that program. Made it cool to be a Hokie, but Georgia Amor, terrific tournament, most outstanding player. 25 today for Georgia Amor. Right here, Iowa with this commanding lead. And in the tournament history, the Big Ten, the largest margin of victory in a championship game happened a couple of years ago when Maryland beat Iowa. And Iowa came back to beat Indiana in the championship game last year. With three, five years that Iowa's played in the championship game of the Big Ten. Marshall trying to lob it in to Sonano, but McMahon was there. Marshall then tipped it away. Four time first team all Big Ten performer. Theory looked inside, and they get it back to her. Like so, with the Floater draws a foul, 18 points, just one point here. Up in each region, eight Eastern five. Second straight year, 68 teams have been in the field. First year that there will be only two regional sites. Seattle and Greenville. Kate Martin. Twelfth assist for Clark. Still three rebounds away what, from what would be her fourth triple-double of the year and her second against Ohio State. And a shoemate. With the bucket, then Caitlin Clark attacks the rim. And that's one where you just, you let her go. Excel decides for the long range three. She's got eight points in this quarter. Ohio State with 30 points in the third. They only had 26 points in the entire first half. Or 24 points, excuse me, a season low. Also had 24 in the first half of Boston, Maryland. 
Coach Park earlier this year. Martin hit one from there a moment ago. Now floats it up and in right before the buzzer went off. Points, 13 assists, and seven rebounds. Hamwood, Stephanie White. Warning you, from Christy Winter Scott. Iowa actually outscored by eight points in that third quarter. Trying to nail down their second straight Big Ten championship. Clark, a little bit short. Theory. Now here's Clark, three on two, pulls it out. Settles things down for Iowa, trying to beat Ohio State for the second time this year. Sheldon, who's a really good defensive player, got it away from Clark and fumbled it out of bounds. We can hear her from over here. <laughs> we can, yes and we can. It's raspy, but it's projecting. <laughs> Abby Marshall, who has been on fire from three-point range the last 10 games, has hit 60% of them. Peyton Clark does it again. Gets it into Sonano. In perfect harmony. Shoemate has given Kevin McGuff a nice punch off the bench here in the second half. Now two rebounds away from a triple-double. Tied up by McMahon. Excel playing with the foul trouble. Clark with the kick. Sell and Harris each with four personals for Ohio State. Marshall, good job to have the baseline cover. Yesterday, Cody McMahon fronted Mackenzie Holmes inside, and she was able to use her elevation to get over the top. But what Monica Sinano does so well is she holds that seal until the ball's over her head, so when she releases, she can go get it. So it doesn't leave Cody McMahon any time to get up and get the ball. I mean, McMahon is sitting on her, and Monica Sinano right here, she doesn't go for it until it gets above her head, so the timing is perfect. And Caitlin Clark puts just enough lift and leads her just enough to the rim that allows it to be delivered. Yeah, it's really uncanny how perfect those passes always seem to be. Sonano gets one from Martin this time. Caitlin <laughs> Clark now with 15 assists. That is three off her career high that she set at Penn State last year. Excel, lighten it up. And they're less than seven minutes away from repeating. Caitlin Clark has put a hurting on Ohio State, both in the regular season, the winning matchup in the regular season, and today. Had a triple-double, first time out has already matched with 15 assists and 28 points and two rebounds away from a triple-double today. Monica Sonano not so bad. Martin scores. How about Monica Sonano in two games is shooting 88% from the floor against the Bucks. She just gets such good position. And of course, when you have Caitlin Clark who can deliver the pass to you right where you can just go straight into your shot, it makes a difference. 
Clark able to tightrope it by the sideline to keep it in. Looking for Sonato. Automatic. Well, there's nothing that Cody McMahon can do if she gets behind Monica Sonano. I mean, it's tough enough when you're in front, you're depending upon your help behind you, but when you get buried, this is an Ohio State team in the second half that's playing five perimeter players. And Caitlin Clark sees it. She knows Monica Sonano's cutting across the lane. She waits till she gets in position and she delivers the pass and Sonano goes to work. Well, Caitlin Clark and her family, they are very, very close. Her dad, Brett, and her mom, and they've been here for the week-long tournament. Also, her brother, Blake, and Colin. Now, Blake and her dad, Brent, they are here. But Ann had to go back with her younger son, Colin, who is a senior in high school. He has his basketball banquet today, so they've had to divide and conquer. But Caitlin has played so much pickup ball with her brothers and their friends. That's how she became so ruggedly fierce on the court as a competitor. Ruggedly fierce really nails it with uh, Caitlin <laughs> Clark, who's now just one rebound away from her fourth triple double of the season. And Caitlin Clark certainly has a, the, the dog in her. The, the, the supreme compliment that you like to talk about. Mm -hmm. Every team needs one, but she's kind of got some kind of that Tarasi. She's got the swag. She's got the extra stuff going on that can I would think would irritate the heck out of teammates. Or, or, or opponents. Opponents, yeah. Teammates love it. Yeah, teammates okay. love it. You always get to take ahead of opponents. No doubt about it. But you know what? To be a great player, you've got to have that dog. And, and you've got to have that fire. And you've got to have that competitiveness. And certainly, I think that Caitlin Clark's persona, um, as well as her game, has been good for the game of basketball. There are a lot of eyeballs that are, that are on it that want to see what she can do. And you look in this arena, and it's full of black and gold. And, and there's no doubt that the Hawks love this team and they love Caitlin Clark. And the hustle continues. That is her 10th rebound. Another triple double for Caitlin Clark. And then she faked, but she was going to throw up the shot. Stolke, who is in for Sonano, who is now sitting down with four fouls. The recipient of that pass. Man, frustrated. <laughs> uh -huh. Another 30-point triple-double for Caitlin. But Ohio State's going to have an opportunity to get some time here get healthy as Gabby Marshall continues her hot streak. And they've hit 100. The century mark. A falter pursued by McMahon who fouled her. Baseline drive, baseline drift. Gabby Marshall knocks down the three, and this place erupts. Caitlin Clark goes out with an another incredible line. Second triple double of the season against Ohio State. Her fourth of the season, her tenth of her career. And when, before she left, she was kind of doing a, you know, a walking victory lap, if you will, and looking at the crowd and yelling, let's go, and firing them up. Was shooting 66% for the game. They 
it 26 to nine after one quarter. 61-24 at the half. One up. Missed everything. McMahon. Really had a good second half for Ohio State on the offensive end. Team second. 22, and now Gabby Marshall goes out. Three for three from three-point range in her last 10 games, over 60% beyond the arc. Her first 22, 24%. And Pam, we've seen a lot of this Iowa team, and they, they have their ups and downs, but this is a team that looks like a Final Four caliber. Yeah. Up. This certainly counts as an up. Charlie Cream has them as a two seed. He had Ohio State as a three. And when you look at this performance, granted they're not playing Indiana. The top seed was beaten by Ohio State yesterday after coming back from 24 down. Mike Sell is a three-point machine herself, but gosh, you look at them. When they're playing like this, they're a Final Four team. No doubt. They're a top seed. And, and look, the Big Ten has been the toughest, deepest conference in the country this year. And they lost on the road at Illinois to a really good Illinois team. Sean Green's done an outstanding job. Lose back team. Going to come back. They only have Molly Davis is a transfer. Kylie Fuhrbach is a, a hurt transfer. But the, and, and this shows you, right, the, the strength of chemistry and being together. And well, the same starters for three years. Yeah, that's ridiculous. That just doesn't happen. It doesn't happen. And you and you look at this this crowd. This crowd is invested in this program because they're invested in these young women. Because they get to know them, they watch them, they follow them, they're invested in them, and that's because this group has stuck together and have continued to do special things. This is a an emphatic win. We still have two minutes to go in this game. Coach Bluter has emptied her bench. Lettering. Cave with the miss, rebound taken down. AJ Ediger. A collision. Bluter talks about how much she loves this team, how proud she is that certainly the big two get a lot of attention, but everybody else plays their role, understands that. Championship, all smiles for Caitlin Clark with another triple double. And they will host in the first and second round in Iowa City. Barber Hawkeye Arena North is like this, flicker, flicker of red across the way from us. For the Ohio State fans, everything else is black and gold. And they have been loud all weekend. Going to fall to 25 and 7 on the season. And Charlie Cream has them projected as a three seed. Kaya Henderson in the game, the freshman from Utica, New York, with the bucket. But the day, the weekend, and the Big Ten belong to the Iowa Hawkeyes. Ten rebounds. What an effort by this team. From the start of the game, they put, came out, had their foot on the gas, and did not let up. 62% for the game. And now the Iowa fans celebrate along with their team. For the second straight year, the Iowa Hawkeyes win the Big Ten Championship. And they do it in record fashion.